Up in, bud. <laughs> David. <laughs> Welcome back to the Southern Motor Works channel. Um, so it's been about a month since we posted last, yeah? About a month? So we've been busy. Been busy here at the old uh, homestead here in the Florida Panhandle. And uh, the old XC70 here has just been driving me crazy. To meet our new farm cat, Mercedes. <laughs> farm slash shop cat, right, girl? Yeah. <laughs> So as I said, we've been busy here at the home at the homestead with some different home repairs and stuff and different issues coming up. But the biggest thing that's uh, held us up from any sort of posting has been the uh, the XC70 here was just kind of giving us uh, she was giving us some problems, and I racked my brain for about two weeks, just driving me crazy, keeping me up at night. And uh, yes, yes, girl, yes. Apparently, it's pet the cat time, not video time. So interrupting her schedule I guess but <laughs> so anyways like I said on the on the previous video we uh, put the new timing belt on and we were doing the um, uh, camber bolts on the front suspension to try to adjust the positive camber that we had after we lifted it um, I will go ahead and put that part in there because that part's still valid on um, how to install those and showing you what's up um, but when it come time to put the timing belt on we didn't do it properly um, it, it I, we'd never worked on one of these VVT engines before, so the uh, the timing cams were a little bit different than what we're used to, and um, so before we released that video, we just we didn't want to put it out there and have people possibly seeing it and doing it the incorrect way like we did, so we held on to that video, um, and uh, like I said, we'll splice in the part where we install the camber bolts because that part's still straight, but um, as far as the rest of it goes, we ended up figuring it out. Um, you know after a couple weeks and uh just turned into a, a whole big thing and um racked my brain on it for a couple weeks I actually ended up getting in touch with another youtuber his name's adam drives i'll link his profile in the uh description of this video if you have any issues with volvos check out the guy's videos uh he knows exactly what he's talking about whenever it comes to timing and stuff i uh, reached out to him on one of his videos and he set us up with it and um I did everything exactly like you said on this VVT engine and it runs like freaking top again. It was super simple, way less complicated than what, you know, we initially thought it was going to be and what we were trying to do with it. So like I said, I'll link his profile in this video here and uh, dude, dude was a, a, a lifesaver. So y'all go check him out, give him a sub and um, yeah, so we'll get you in there and show you what we're, what we were dealing with and how we got it figured out. So. As I'm sure you all have all heard, you know, you have these timing marks on the top timing cover on these uh, Volvo five-cylinder engines and whatnot. And there's a little notch underneath there that you're supposed to line the timing mark up with. Well, turns out um, that's much less important than the actual act of locking the uh, camshafts from the back side of the engine. So we'll show you this little tool that we bought. I think it was like a little less than 50 bucks on Amazon or something. And uh, we picked this up. Set it down there. Now, how this works is you see these tabs here, they lock into the back sides of the camshaft. And if you have a particular engine where you need a little bit more reach on them, you can stack these on there like that. Um, but it locks onto the back side of the camshafts where the where the um, camshaft position sensors go. So you definitely gotta have those on. Um, once you lock the back side of the camshafts, the timing marks up here are really not important. Um, basically what you do is lock the back side get them in the right position lock the back sides and then uh, loosen up these three bolts that's on either camshaft here one two three and what you're going to do is rotate the hub and the gear itself clockwise on both the exhaust and the or the exhaust and the intake or if you just have one or the other rotate the gear and the hub completely uh, clockwise as far as you can put your belt on right and then you're going to take a T55 on the inner portion of the hub here and rotate that clockwise as far as it'll go. And you hold it there and, and 
cinch down these three bolts on either side and as long as you have that done with your camshaft or crankshaft marking being straight on the bottom there um, then you should all be set up so it's just a matter of having the crankshaft lined up and then having the camshafts locked from the back side rotate the hub and the gear completely clockwise as far as it'll go put your bow back on you should be good to go but he explains it a little bit more in depth on his video there and actually shows you you know how it's going to move and everything so like i said i'll i'll uh post a link to it in this video and uh, hopefully it'll help some other folks out and i know he was a lifesaver when it comes to this thing for us so but uh we got that all done like i said it runs like a top again um we got the water pump replaced so i do believe the coolant leak is fixed now um we haven't really driven it to be able to tell um the camber bolts are in we think we have it adjusted fairly decent um it's kind of hard to tell we don't really have a whole lot of uh like super flat concrete here so that may be something we might have to park it in a parking lot and check it or something but eventually we'll get it in for an alignment anyway um but for right now what we're going to do is go ahead and put all the covers back on the engine and everything and we'll get this thing fired up and uh take it for a little test drive or something and um maybe go ride down some of these dirt roads around here or something like that and see how she does with the new lifts and everything so all right So we'll show you real quick um off camera we went ahead and uh between the two videos here and all the rigmarole dealing with this we uh dealt with the uh, water pump under there and stuff we'll show you it's a little hard to see we have a new water pump on there and we actually re replaced the uh tensioner and the idler pulley also they weren't like they weren't in like horrible shape or anything um that's the tensioner there as you can see it's still kind of um it's still got some spring to it but there's a little bit of noise in the bearing and the same on the idler pulley here just a little bit of corrosion a little noise in it when you spin it so so we wanted to go ahead and replace those just to be on the safe side so went ahead and swapped those out um off camera and uh got that all fixed so now we're just fighting putting this uh little cover back over the timing uh, pulleys and whatnot so ended up having to take the passenger side front tire back off so we can reach in there and try to get it straightened out All right, so like I said, we did get a uh, new um, water pump, camber bolts, and we actually did order a timing belt here. Um, that was just kind of a precaution thing. I wasn't really sure the shape ours was in. It seems to be fine. Um, I'm gonna leave it on there for right now. Uh, in the near future, we're gonna be uh, redoing the, not only the timing belt with this nice deco that we bought here, but we're gonna be replacing the um, timing belt tensioner fully and the uh, idler fully also. Those, I uh, just couldn't get a hold of the ones that I wanted, the particular brand that I wanted at the moment. So we're going to be replacing those in a later video. Um, but for right now, we're going to go ahead and just uh, loosen up this timing belt that we have. Um, and uh, 
get the water pump replaced. Uh, that's the immediate problem right now, but we'll show you what we got here. The Deco timing belt here, part number 95311. We have our US Motor Works uh, water pump, part number US 9339. And then from Specialty Products Company, we have our camber bolts there. You can kind of see there the uh, way it's going to work. They have this little nub on there as well that will, uh, whenever we spin it, will adjust the angle on the steering knuckle. So in that way we can fix our camber on the front wheels. But um, yeah, so without any further ado, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and first things first, we're going to jack it up, take the passenger front tire off so that we can actually access the uh, crankshaft fully because we got to get the engine on TDC and line up some timing marks, marks before we can go any further on anything so all right so it's the following day uh, we're back out here on the Volvo uh, XC70 uh, what we're going to be working on today is trying to get the new water pump installed on there but first before we do anything we've got to get the gasket mating surface on the engine block cleaned up nice and neat um, it's got a bunch of old gasket material and stuff like that on there so we'll get y'all in there and show you what we're talking about but um yeah, we're going to get that all cleaned up and then we will try to uh, go ahead and mount the new water pump on there and let her cure up overnight. Let the little bit of RTV we put on it cure up overnight. So, all right. So as you can see, I don't, see, I don't know if y'all can quite see it from here, but there's a bunch of old gasket material on there and stuff. So we're going to get down in there with a flat blade screwdriver or whatever else we might need to use and uh, try to get that cleaned up as best we can here. All right, so we've got our uh, gasket mating surface on the block side, the engine block side, cleaned up pretty well, um, as well as we can get it in there. It's a pretty tight little little space down there. But um, so now what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and start working on this. Um, we got our brand new water pump there. You can see a nice metal impeller, metal gear, and uh, we have our gasket. So what we're going to do is just smear just a very thin, thin layer of some RTV on the surface here, place our gasket on there, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side of the gasket and place just a real thin layer of um, RTV around the, uh, on the surface of the gasket, and then we'll put her up in there, screw it down finger tight, let it kind of get a little bit tacky, and then we'll come back out here and uh, torque these down in about, I don't know, an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, once this stuff gets kind of tacky and it doesn't, isn't just gonna squish out whenever you torque it down, so, um, yeah, we'll show you what we're going to do here. Like I said, real thin layer. There's no need to go, you know, and put big old giant globs of it on there to where when you tighten it down, it's going to be squeezing out every side. That's just kind of unnecessary. So kind of keep that in mind. So we got our RTV squeezed out on there. So now what we're going to do is just take our finger and kind of smear it around so we have a nice thin layer on there. You want to make sure you get it around completely around all the bolt holes on here so we don't have any stray leaks around the bolt holes. All right, so you can barely see it on there because we're using ultra gray, but real thin layer on the uh, mounting surface here. That's all you need. The gasket, it's uh, impossible to have it backwards. It only goes on one way, as you can see. So we're going to go ahead and lay that down on there. Now your RTV is going to kind of hold that in place while you get the rest of it on there, thankfully. There are dowel pins on this for for alignment purposes on the engine block side, so that's kind of good too. All right, that's about what we're looking for there. Just a nice thin layer on it, and uh, it's kind of fighting us a little bit. This gasket was friggin' 
bent when we got it in the mail, unfortunately. So that's kind of making it want to pop off the surface of the water pump here. But uh, that's what we're looking for anyway, just a nice thin layer. So now we're going to go ahead and try to uh, install this on the engine block side in here. Goes up and down like this here. Try to align these dowel pins. That's going to be our our uh, saving grace on getting this lined up nice and easy like. All right, so as you can see, we got it mounted down there on the uh, dowel pins. I put one bolt in there just to hold it for a second, but we actually ended up changing it up. We um, we uh, put the gasket on the uh, block side first and then uh, wiggled the water pump down in there and, and mounted it on the block. It's a bit of a bear to get it in there past the timing belt and everything and not get, you know, anything on the timing belt or disrupt the gasket if you're having it on the water pump side first. So instead we put it on the engine block side, kind of stuck it up in there on the dowel pins and whatnot, and then wiggled the water pump down in there. Um, now I will tell you, whenever you're installing the new bolts, you're going to want to put a little bit of a uh, RTV or thread sealing or something on there. Um, because I do believe some of these, uh, bolts will leak if you don't. So we're just putting a little bit of our RTV around the, very top of the threads of the bolt here and um, the, the uh, underneath of the head of it here and uh, that should seal it up good enough that uh, we shouldn't have any water leaks here Okay, so we've let our RTV uh, cure up for about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. So it should be good and tacky now. So now we're going to take our uh, quarter inch drive um, uh, torque wrench here and uh, set it to 150 inch pounds. It equals out to about 17 newton meters is the metric measurement for it. Um, but here we use freedom units. So we're going to use uh, 150 foot, uh, inch pounds rather. And uh, we'll get you in there and show you just kind of what you want to do is just kind of... Um, Torque it down, but do it in kind of a cross pattern just to make sure that everything goes gets torqued down evenly and whatnot. And uh, yeah, then this water pump will be installed. We can go ahead and start reassembling stuff tomorrow after we get home from the day job and get those uh, camber bolts installed. That'll be the, the next step. So for now, though, we're going to go ahead and, like I said, torque down this water pump, get everything uh, buttoned up on this side. All right, so we've got a brand new water pump installed down there. Everything is torque to spec, 17 Newton meters or uh, 150 inch pounds here in uh, standard units. So we're gonna call it a night there and uh, tomorrow whenever we get home from the day job, we'll finish reinstalling the uh, timing belt and uh, tensioner pulley and all that and uh, move on to the camera bolts and we'll get the old girl sitting straight up and down like she ought to again. So, all right, y'all stick tight, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, so it's the following evening. Uh, we have rechecked all the uh, torque on the uh, water pump bolts there. Everything's still good to go. Um, all that uh, RTV should be sealed up nice and tight now. 
So what we're gonna do now is just work on kind of cleaning up some of this trash and stuff a little bit and reinstalling the um, uh, timing belt tensioner pulley on there. Um, getting that clocked back into the right position and whatnot. And then we should be good to be able to uh, release the timing belt 100% again and then probably fire it up just to make sure everything's good to go. So, all right. Okay, so we've got our uh, tensioner pulley um, tightened back down, and uh, I believe the little mark on it there lined up for the temperature uh, wise as far as the, it adjusts as far as temperature. Um, we'll get you in there, try to show you here. If you guys can, if y'all can see it real good down there, but it uh, tightens down tightens down to um what was it 20 newton meters equals out to about 177 inch pounds so i just use a quarter inch inch pound uh what do you call it torque wrench there to uh tighten her down it is a kind of a, a bit of a pain in the butt you have to um stick your six millimeter um allen wrench in there on the eccentric part of it and then hold that dead still while you torque down torque it down to 177 inch pounds but we got it done in there so now what I'm gonna do just to verify to make sure everything's good to go is we're gonna go back down on the bottom side, rotate the engine all the way around from the uh, crankshaft pulley and uh, make sure that our timing marks stay in line up top here. First, we gotta cut our zip ties off that we were using to hold it all together here. Okay, so it's following day. Uh, we decided to just call it a night last night after we got the uh, engine side of things buttoned up. Um, it was getting late and super windy and pretty chilly for Florida, so we uh, called it a night, and uh, this morning we got up. We've already done the uh, camber bolt on the passenger side, just so we could, uh, you know, get it all figured out how it was going to work and everything. It's kind of a little hard to tell, but it's kind of a little hard to tell. But it's definitely, definitely further inboard, less positive camber on it. So now we'll go ahead and get it all set up on the passenger side over here, and uh, show you all how to do it. Um, it's actually pretty simple. Just got to keep an eye on where the tabs are at on these camber bolts and stuff. But uh, we didn't go all the way. I, I didn't want to end up with negative camber on it. So I think we got it pretty well set up, but we still got a little bit further we can go if we need to. But we're going to set the driver's side about the same as the passenger side. And then we'll, um, we'll go ahead and get it all set down on the ground and everything. See where we're at and if we need to adjust it any further from there. Um, after that, we got to throw a little oil change on it real quick. And then we should be good to go take it for a test drive. All right, so what we're gonna be doing first here is moving the top um, steering knuckle uh, bolt here. Um, we'll get this one loose, and then we're going to go ahead and slide our new camber bolt in there. We won't tighten it down yet. We'll get, get it slid in there, and then before we start to set it, we will loosen the bottom bolt. That'll allow the steering knuckle to kind of shift like this here. Okay, so old bolt out. Okay, so as you can see, let me get a little better light here. So as you can see, this is our previous bolt, uh, just standard size. This is gonna be our new camber bolt. Now, the way this works is if you're trying to, um, if you're trying to, um, offset some positive camber you place this big tab here towards the back of the vehicle opposite if you're trying to offset some negative camber and give it more positive camber we have too much positive camber so we're going to shift it this direction now what this is going to do is whenever you insert it in here like this this little lug it's like a it's like a lug on a camshaft right there i don't know if y'all can really make that out so the way this is going to work is when we rotate the bolt it will depending on which way we have it oriented, it's gonna push the top of the steering knuckle either further out or further in. So obviously ours is too far out like this here, so we're gonna to wanna to 
rotate this lug to where it pushes it further in like this and that's going to reduce our positive camber so we're going to go ahead and just get this slid in there for now just hold it in there for a second now we'll loosen up the bottom bolt that will allow the whole steering knuckle to pivot So like I said, we don't want to take this out completely. We're just going to leave it loose on there for now. Just so that we can make our steering knuckle move. Okay, so what you want to do is just kind of line up this. There's a little small tab in here on this side. Okay, see it right there? We're going to line that up with the cam on this bolt. So that way we can keep track of where that cam is. And the cam happens to be right in line with this point on this uh, on this side of the bolt right here. So what we're going to have to do now is hold that in place. And we're going to give this bolt just a little tap. If we can. Might have to move the steering knuckle slightly. There we go, just like that. Now you want that... You want to have that small tab actually fit inside the hole on the bolt. See how it sits flush there? Can't be like this. It's got to be inside that hole. So you want it to be flush. So now that it's flush, we can give that a little tap. Okay, so now our bolt is in there all the way. We know this point is where the cam is at. So right now, it's giving us positive camber. So what we're going to do is tighten down the other... Or Snug down the other side, I should say. This is a 15 millimeter on this side. And 18 millimeter on this side. So what we're going to do, if you watch closely, get you in there even closer. If you watch closely, you'll be able to see the bolt as we rotate it start to shift the top of the steering knuckle further inboard, which is going to reduce our positive camber. See it there? And then it's back to negative, right? So if you watch, you can go through the whole cycle of it. So that's going more negative, or more, yeah, more positive. Okay, so we've got our set right about where I want it. So we're gonna make sure that we hold this, the head of the bolt, right about where it's at right now. Right about in there. We didn't go as far this way as we can. We backed it off just a little bit to give us a little bit of leeway if we want to. All right, so as you can see, you can see it move back and forth there. So we wanna make sure we hold this side right where it's at. And we're going to tighten down this side. Okay, so we kept our bolt right about where we wanted it. I don't really see a problem with it there. Okay, so we have our bolt right about where we want it. Now, you do want to take, uh, torque this down to 97 foot-pounds, no further, um, I guess. I don't know, it says in big writing on the thing not to over-torque it, so it must have a chance of breaking or stripping out or something. But anyways, we're gonna set it to 97 foot-pounds here.
Okay, so we're set at 97 foot-pounds. We'll go ahead and tighten the bottom bolt back down and then we'll put the wheel back on. This side will be done. Okay, so bottom bolt's all tightened up now, so we will go ahead and put the wheel back on. Okay, so now that we've got our uh, suspension parts all done up, we're going to knock out a quick oil change on her. She's a little bit overdue, so uh, we'll get our drain pin in position. 17 millimeter to take the drain plug loose. All right, while we're waiting on that to drain, we'll go ahead and clean off our drain plug, go up top side and put the rest of the engine covers back on. Alright, so we got our oil all drained out. Aiden in the background. <laughs> so we got our oil all drained out and um, we're getting ready to reinstall the oil drain plug underneath there. And we have our assortment here of oils, some nice castor oil edge, recommended by Volvo, 5W30 Euro formula. And then we have an STP filter. Normally I don't go with STP. Um, usually I go with like a Molly or a Man filter. I was in a pinch, couldn't get a hold of one of those uh, at the moment. That being said, this doesn't seem to be too bad of a filter here. The media seems to be fine. It's got a nice uh, felt top on it, so we'll see how she holds up. But um, I'm sure it'll be fine. We changed ours at 3,000 miles, anyways, which is kind of overkill. But you know, when you got a higher mileage engine, you got to give her a little bit more TLC than normal. So we'll get under there, pop the uh, oil drain plug back in, and. Uh, Swap our new filter on there and get her filled up with some fresh oil. All right, so same as same as, as I've said in previous videos, there's no need to really torque down this uh, oil drain plug too much. You just get it finger tight and then just snug it up after that little crush washer that's on it, or that will uh, seal it up nice and tight. No need to, you know, give it 47 ugga duggas to uh, tighten up an oil drain plug. Now we'll get our uh, oil filter off. Okay, so we've got our oil filter housing here I already pulled the old one out of there oh almost forgot we got to remove the old o-ring get that all set up for the new one to go on there old one out And install our new o ring. Can you open that for me, buddy? What do we do next, Aiden? Well, after you put it in there. No, what do we do next, right here? You put the o ring back on. Okay, then what? You put the oil filter in. Okay. Our new oil filter, I don't think there's a particular way. Yeah, it doesn't matter which way it goes. Oh, what do we do before that? They put some old oil on. Yeah, there you go. Piss off all the people on the internet that say that you shouldn't do this. That's what you do. Use a little bit of the old oil on there. Get that 
new gasket lubed up or new o-ring rather lubed up then we put our new filter in there and you'll hear a little that's what it is <laughs> when you hear that it's seated all the way and go ahead and stick it back up underneath there and get her snug down again not a a lot of torque it takes to snug this down. I think it's like 25 Newton meters or something. Yeah, which is like not a whole lot at all. Also, just a quick note here. Thank you, Aiden, for the new uh, creeper for uh, Christmas. I guess he got tired of seeing me fool around on my like 20 year old craftsman creeper over here with the wheels falling off, missing a wheel down there. So they ended up, he got me this nice new creeper here. Transforms into a seat and everything. It's a uh, it's quite the unit here so we'll uh i'll probably do a short little review of that one in a different video we'll upload that as a short or something and uh show you all how it works in case y'all are interested but uh for right now we've got our oil drain plug back in new oil filter in what goes next Aiden? Huh? what happens next oil in. okay all right so we're gonna put the oil in now <laughs> Like so we've got our castor wedge 5w30 here a3b4 it's a uh, full synthetic euro motor oil here recommended by volvo so that's what we're going to go with we've got our our nice makeshift funnel again this thing here is just uh it's top notch you know what i'm saying it's uh yeah i really like using it it's just um it's much wider than a lot of funnels you can buy in the store so it works good for us and we're looking for 6.1 quarts here is the uh, magic number. So we got our five quarts in this. Then we have two more single quarts. We'll use a whole one of those. Oh, poured a little bit too fast there. So we'll use a whole one of those and um, a little bit of the second single quart jug and then we'll leave a little bit extra just for um, keeping in the car. You never know when you need a little extra motor oil. Here, you can do this one. We'll swap out. Okay. Pour slowly. <laughs> there you go. Not yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Keep doing what you're doing. Just don't go too fast. The Volvos, they have this stupid little baffle thing right there in the uh, oil fill spout. Just uh, really makes it back up right there if you're not careful. Yeah, that looks like 0.1 quarts. <laughs> now it does. <laughs> All right, so we've got our oil added. We'll obviously check the level after we ran it for a little bit. But for right now, we're going to get all of our tools cleaned up. We've got stuff all over the place. So we're going to get everything cleaned up, uh, get the uh, oil fill cap back on, get the XC filled up with a uh, coolant here. Um, and uh, that'll be about it. We'll uh, get her crunk up, backed out, and we'll uh, take it for a test drive, all right?
good. We don't have any leaks coming out of that uh, water pump or anything else, so that seems to have sealed up pretty good. I can tell the alignment's still off a little bit. Um, it's, uh, it's a little stiff to drive, which I don't know. It could just be the new tie rods and stuff like that, but uh, steering wheel's off a little bit. I don't really care about that as long as it you know drives fairly straight, but we're definitely going to have to take and find an alignment shop up here and get her aligned. But, uh, I mean, it's good enough to, you know, drive right now, but we don't want to have any weird tire wear going on or anything, you know, just kind of driving like crap, so... stop by the old pig get some stuff for dinner according to the missus and uh so we'll head on back so far a successful test ride all right so we're back at the house here uh successful test drive um everything is sealed up nothing leaked or whatever uh no coolant leaks um still have that little small power steering leak that we got to address but no new leaks, I should say. That being said, um, we still got a little bit of positive camera going on here. It's causing it to kind of be a little darty um, whenever you're trying to drive in a straight line. If you've ever driven a vehicle with too much positive camera, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, we've gotten as much as we're going to get out of the top camber bolt. So we're going to have to do a little figuring out for that and see what we can do to get rid of the rest of that positive camber. Um, might have to install more on the bottom or see if we can get a little bit more eccentric out of that top camber bolt or something i don't know we'll figure something out um that being said <laughs> i don't know if y'all can see this or not but it would appear as though the ancient front cv axles that's on there are not fans of the increased angle after the lift they're uh kind of you know evacuating themselves of all the grease that's supposed to be inside the boot there so We'll probably get on maybe Rock Auto or something like that later tonight. See how much uh, new set of front CV axles is going to be. Uh, probably just go ahead and replace those straight off because, I mean, they're super old. They're going to be needing replacing soon anyway, so we might as well just go on ahead and do it. But that'll be for another video. Um, as far as this one right here, I think we're going to go ahead and take it for a little test drive down some of the dirt roads. It's running great. Uh, plenty of power again after that time and belt uh, replacement and everything. So. We'll go rip it up and down the dirt road a few times. So that's going to do it for this episode of uh, Southern Motor Works. Just a quick little recap video, kind of get us back going again, show y'all where we've been. And uh, so the next video, if I can knock back up into the stop sign, the next video is probably going to be us uh, replacing CV axles on this thing. Um, 
and trying to get the rest of the uh, positive camber out of this. But for right now, she's up, she's running and driving again, ain't no leaks, no wheels falling off, no engine fires, nothing like that. She's got plenty of, plenty of giddy up again. So mission successful for right now. And so we'll move on to uh, the next project, trying to get this thing back up uh, modified and uh, back up the snuff where she ought to be on the road and off road. So, all right, I appreciate y'all checking in. Appreciate y'all watching the content. If you enjoy it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see y'all the next one. All right, y'all have a good one out there.